I'm Pauline Larson and this is Petey and welcome to Power Kids. Today we're going to talk about having friends and how to be a friend. Yeah, I don't have any friends. You don't have any friends? No, I'm nice to everyone. You're nice to everyone and you don't have any friends. Well that's kind of, kind of different. Yeah, but one of them was really mean to me and I didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything? Um, you sure you didn't do anything? No. Um, why was he so mean to you? Hmm, I did trip him. Oh, he tripped him. Well, that's, that's not how to be a good friend. <laughs> you know, if you want to have friends, you need to be a friend, but you also need to be careful about picking your friends. You know, there's people who may want to be your friend and they're not living for God or they're doing things that are not very good. And you hoping that you can maybe change them, well, that's good, but you need good, strong friends too. And we're going to talk about, you know, David and um, Jonathan that were good friends. We're going to talk in the Bible about some things. So anyway, in the meantime, we're going to go over the memory verse. You ready for the memory verse? Oh, I guess so. All right. Well, that sounds like last week's. That's similar. It says, what does it read? Okay. Care for one another. 1 Corinthians 12, 25. Well, what if they don't care for you? Well, you're still supposed to care for people. You know, Jesus tells us we're to love people. Well, I don't even like everybody. They don't like me either. Well, people know it when you don't care for them, but honestly, we're to love God and we're to love people and there's a lot of a lot of hate in the world today and a lot of unforgiveness and a lot of anger and you know what's really interesting is a lot of things about people saying they you know whether it's race whatever it is what's interesting though is if you if you're a person and you need a transfusion it doesn't matter what race. We all have the same blood, and we have the blood of Jesus. And we are family when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. It doesn't matter what country you're from, what race you are, whatever. It does matter, though, who your Lord is, and he needs to be Jesus. There are a lot of false gods in the world. There are a lot of things that you know people talk about Mother Earth or whatever. But it's really all about Jesus and what he did for us. And that we call ourselves power kids on this show because there's power through the name of Jesus. And anyway, we're going to go on now and we're going to talk about our PowerPoint, which is 1 Samuel 18, 1. The soul of Jonathan was, that's not the scripture. <laughs> that's not the PowerPoint. <laughs> Let's try again. That's a scripture. Well, I thought it looked kind of different. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. We're going to talk about friends. This slide was really supposed to be later. But Jonathan was a uh, son of Saul. And Saul was very angry at David because, well, David, you know, killed Goliath. And David was everybody's hero. In fact, there were some women singing a song about how Saul had killed his thousands, but David had killed his ten thousands of the enemy. And so, but Jonathan and and David had a true friendship, and it was very special. Let's go on out to the PowerPoint. All right. You want to? <laughs> That's better. I wonder what you're doing. Yeah, I was wondering there too. All right. A true friend will help his friend become a better Christian. Well, how do you do that? Well, one thing is by living the life, being real, not being a hypocrite, saying one thing with your mouth, and doing something totally different with your life. If you're a Christian, then you need to live for Jesus. And, you know, you can't, you go, there's people go to church and they act all holy on Sunday, and then on Monday, they act more like the devil than they do a Christian. Yeah, there's cats like that too. All right, now it's about time for you to say goodbye. You ready? Yeah, I guess so. All right. Bye. All right, let's take you and put you back here, and we'll go on. All right. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go on to the four things that we need to learn about God. And, of course, we go over these every week. And some of you who watch the show on a regular basis might go, Oh, I know those. Well, good. Uh, when you see people who don't know anything about Jesus, tell them these things. First one is, God loves me. And I'm sure glad he does. There's people who don't love me. I don't understand why. 
I think I'm a nice person, but you know what? The truth of the matter is not everybody's going to love you or like you, and that's life. Secondly, but God always loves you. Now, what's really amazing is I have sinned, you've sinned, everybody needs a Savior. And what's amazing to me is that God loves us, like that's number one, in spite of the fact he knows what a little rascal you've been at times and what you've done. And so I remember I, I uh, was talking to some man and I was trying to witness to him. And I said, well, everybody's sinned. And he says, I've never sinned, never once in my whole life. What was really funny was the guy was in prison. And I was visiting him in the prison hospital, and I thought, you've never sinned, but you're in prison. <laughs> so I um, thought that was rather interesting. <laughs> anyway, obviously there was a jury that felt otherwise. All right, number three is Jesus died for me, and he died for you. And, you know, I, somebody, <laughs> when I was first saved, I thought, well, if he loved us, why didn't he just send us flowers? I mean, they've been dying how does that help? I didn't realize the reason he died was he paid the price for us. He gave us a brand new covenant. You know, the Bible has the Old and New Testament. Well, what's a testament? Well, when you read a will, it's called a testament. It's the old will and the new will, and, it's, and they, they're together. Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it. So now we're going to go up to four. I must decide to live for him. That's a decision everybody has to make, and sometimes it's an hourly thing. Sometimes it's like, do I do this? Do I do that? I don't feel like doing this, and I'd rather not do that. Or, you know, somebody asks you to go do something that's really fun, and you know you needed, your mother told you to clean your room, and you go, oh, I want to go have fun. They want to go to the beach, and it'll be fun, and I don't want to stay here and clean this room. But you need to do what's right. One of the things is you honor your parents. Now, some of you kids think, oh, do we have to bring that up? Yeah, you do need to honor the authorities and parents. Right now, there's all kinds of looting and rioting going on in our nation and throughout the world. And that's not right. Peaceful protests because a man was unjustly killed, and it was wrong. There's no two ways around it. The person who was killed, it was wrong. It's been in the news. And... But at the same time, going and breaking stores and, and breaking in and stealing big, big TVs and stuff, how does that help the guy who was killed? It just makes it worse. In fact, what we need to realize is maybe you don't like what the authorities are saying. Maybe you don't like things. Well, pray for those people and, and do what's right. And then vote when you're old enough for somebody to get the right people in. And in the meantime... You do what you can. All right, we're going to go on with uh, the Bible story. And the Bible story we're going to talk about has to do with Jonathan and with David. And, and a big part, you know, um, it talks about with David after he killed Goliath and he, um, been in, he became part of the, um, he was around King Saul a lot. And he got to know David, who was his son. And Actually, Saul got very jealous. You know, what's really funny was when Saul became king, and he was the first king in Israel, when he became king, he was kind of little in his own side, and he was, you know, he began to prophesy and do some weird things, and people say, oh, is he amongst the prophets? But when he got the Holy Spirit, because kings, priests, and prophets the Holy Spirit would come on them, everybody knew it. But, you know, when the Holy Spirit leaves, because if you do things to grieve the Holy Spirit, if you do ugly things to people, if your talk is wrong, if you do things that... The Holy Ghost is a gentleman. He's the Spirit of the Lord, and he will leave, and he left Saul. And, of course, you don't know when it leaves. Everybody around knows when he leaves, when the Holy Spirit leaves a person. And then he became very mean and full of demons. And David would come and play his musical instruments and give Saul relief. Well, like I said at the beginning of the show, people, because David was good at war he, and had killed so many of the enemy, you know, people sit, looked at him as greater almost than um, Saul. And he, also, David had been anointed to be king by Samuel. And so uh, 
I presume that maybe Saul knew that and feared for losing his kingdom. But for whatever reason, he hated David. I mean, he ha yeah, he hated David. But Jonathan loved him, and they became very good friends. You know, I've had a lot of friends. I've had a lot of acquaintances, and I've had some friends that have really been true, true friends. And maybe you only have three or five in your lifetime that are the kind of people they'd almost die for you. They're, they were people who were, you could count on them. They weren't people who were fair weather, they, you know, what I call fair weather friends. They're there at certain times and not at others. Well, David was there and Jonathan for each other. But at this particular time, this example I have up here, David realized Saul was trying to kill him. And Jonathan uh, said, why, uh, you know, you know, was talking to David. He didn't realize what was going on. And David said, why does your father hate me so much? <clears throat> and he said, well, my father tells me everything. But tomorrow there's a feast of the moon and you're invited. And, and uh, David said, no, I'm going to go hide. And if the king becomes angry at my absence, he, because he surely plans to harm me. And, and, they, and Jonathan said, you're my friend. And he says, and he told him basically, I'll cover for you and say you're going with the gathering of your family. And then sure enough, at the, that night at the feast, he became so angry when David wasn't there because he was planning to kill him. And so Jonathan was saying, you know, what has he done? And he said, he's gone for a gathering. And so... Uh, then Saul says, rebellious son, you are more loyal to your friend than to me. As long as he is alive, you will never be king. And, and it, at that moment, Jonathan knew that Saul was out to kill David. And so uh, he went and he met with uh, David and he told him, I'm going to shoot some arrows. And if I shoot beyond, then that will mean you need to go and not come back. If I shoot within a certain distance, then it's okay, it's safe. Well, he shot beyond, and, and they, they hugged each other, and uh, <clears throat> of course, David went on. What's really interesting, though, is after Jonathan got killed in battle, David's life was, a you know, that's when he ended up with a sin with Bathsheba and some things, and it just, Jonathan had been a very close, good friend. And sometimes friends can help keep us on track. And I can't prove this from the Bible, but it seems like there was a difference with David in his life. But what's really interesting is Jonathan had a son. And after Saul and they were all killed, uh, David allowed Mesiphethus to come and eat at his table for the rest of his life. He honored that friendship. And I think that's the thing we need to look at. When we're friends to people, we need to be friends. It needs to be a two-way thing. The person needs to be your friend, but you need to be their friend too. God gives us godly friends, and they help us stay on track, and we can help them become better Christians, and we need each other. It's when you're by yourself, and sometimes we settle for people that are really not good to be around. And we're going to talk about, see these, um, um, what do you call them? tubes or whatever, they're bound together with cords. And, you know, there's a song, Bind Us Together, Lord, Bind Us Together with Cords of Love. And we are bound together when we know the Lord. And our common thread that by, keeps us together is the fact that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And we are part of the family of God. And I don't have any natural brothers or sisters, but I do in the family of God. And some of those people have been really tremendous friends. All right. Now, you see these outfits and things, and I, I want some light-up shoes. They don't make them so much for adults. I think they're pretty cool. I'd like to have the ones that glowed like that. But, you know, sometimes we're so careful about the clothes we pick out and we buy. I've, I've never been a person so much into clothes, but some people spend more time trying to decide on what outfit to wear than they do on the friends they hang with. And, you know, one like we're going to see in this next one. Here we have a, a rotten apple. One rotten apple like that in a bunch will ruin the whole bunch. You hang out with somebody who doesn't have the same beliefs you do, 
doesn't have the same morals that you do, thinks it's all right for kids to sleep around and do things like that. It's all right to do drugs and alcohol and disobey your parents and be rebellious. It's not. And it will affect you. Just like a, a rotten apple will affect all the apples around it in, in the container if there's a bunch of apples. And, you know, the Bible says we'll know them by their fruit. And some... Sometimes we need to look at people and we need to look at their life and see, are they living for Jesus? And those are the kind of people that we need to associate with, ones that love Jesus, that will lift us up, that will not be, uh, you know, ones that are constantly making us feel bad or trying to put us down or whatever. And I, there are people who do that, and we don't need to be around people like that. And it's just, you know, I had Petey in the beginning. He told me he didn't have any friends and everything. And, and, you know, nobody liked him. And it turns out, well, yeah, he'd done something to what was one of them. And it's, it's like we need to be good to each other. And it's uh, we need to be kind and we need to pray for people. We need to pray for our friends. And pray if you don't have any friends that God will send you some godly friends. Everybody needs some. And, of course, we've got the Lord, and he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. But he's our wonderful Lord. But we also need, sometimes we just need flesh and blood people, people to, to hug, people to, you know, join hands in prayer, and just people we can physically see. So it's important. And God wants to give us people, we call it of like precious faith, meaning people who have the same beliefs and standards that we do. All right, we're going to talk today about the Blakesville Bears again. And Bart here is number 23, and he is, um, <coughs> he's got three little friends with him. And actually, they were setting out to do some things that really isn't the coolest thing to do. They decided they wanted to go see if they could find a haunted house. And, you know, as a believer, that's the camp of the enemy. And you go over into those kind of territories and areas, you open yourself up to attack of the enemy. Not that we have to be afraid of them, but you don't go deliberately look at, like if you had a hornet's nest somewhere, you don't go bashing it to see, ooh, let's see if he can make some bees fly around. Yeah, they will. They'll fly on you and sting you. So anyway, I'm going to introduce you. This is B. Ann, that Blakesville and, and Bammy. And they were with him, and they decided they were going to go look for this place. So they start down and heading toward the woods, and they're just kind of walking around. It's getting darker and darker, and they lived in a trailer park, and they just were looking for adventure. You know how kids do. They wanted to do something different. Bears are like that, too. Wanted to do something different, and so they just went on down their, their way, and then they saw the place that people had said, ooh, you know, there's something with that place, and it looked scary, and... One of them says, hey, really, you have haunted house? He says, well, they said, so I don't know, but it's interesting. Let's go and see what we can find. And so uh, it's, uh, they went. Blakester said, look, there's a hole there. Why don't we go in through there? Cause, because Bart had said, we're going to find a door. We're going to find a way to get in properly. We're not going to go in through just any old way. And he said, no, this one's, and his friends would say, no, 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 there's a hole there. It'll be fine. Let's go on in and, and we'll look around. And he says, no, that's not right. You don't go in places like that. You don't know what's in there. You don't know who's in there. You know, you, it's dark. Well, <clears throat> he was telling, no, do not go in there under any circumstances. And you know what? The, his friends wouldn't listen to him. How many of you have friends, they know better about everything? You're usually the ones that get in trouble doing things they shouldn't do. And it's like everybody needs to have a teachable spirit. If somebody really warns you about something, listen to it. And check on the inside to see if it witnesses to you. So he would say, no, this is not what we're doing. Right, this is not what we're supposed to do. And the other three were kind of like, mm, whatever. And so uh, he tried to talk to them. And finally, they decided they were going in there anyway. So that's what they did. They crawled through the hole. And Bart said, they going, what happened? Why are you doing this? You don't know where it goes. And they 
they got in those three, B. Ann, Blakester, and Bammy got inside, and they started walking on a plank when all of a sudden they heard this, and one of them was really scared and said, ooh, this is really dark and scary. I don't like this. This is not fun. This is not good. And all of a sudden he heard a snap. Whoa. And then they started falling. <coughs> they started falling and they were screaming. Of course, Bart was on the outside. He didn't know what to do. You know, it's, he listened to them and then all of a sudden he didn't hear anything. And it was like he was really upset because he wished he hadn't taken him back there. They hadn't listened to him. And he didn't hear any cries. He heard nothing. And finally he got a light and kind of looked and thought he could see them. Well, fortunately, he could see them down there. But they weren't making any noise. It's like they had fallen and it was pretty obvious they were hurt. Well, apparently one of the neighbors heard the commotion. Let me go back here. Heard the commotion and came. And they were able. Bart was still a friend. And he was like, they didn't do what I wanted or what I said. But I'm still their friend. I'm not going off and leaving him. You know, his temptation could have been he shouldn't have been there either. I'm going to take off and leave him. I don't want to even acknowledge the fact I was involved with that. We shouldn't have gone back down there. But he didn't. He decided, I'm a friend. I'm going to do what I can to help. And they did get him out. They ended up going to the hospital, but they were all right. Fortunately, they were all right. Now, whether the house was haunted or not, who knows. But the point is, they really shouldn't have been down there anyway. But nevertheless, he stayed with them, and that's what's important. And so, you know, with us, we one of the things with friends, good friends, if you were with somebody who was a good friend, they might have said, you know, I don't know that we're really supposed to go down there. And we can help each other. The truth of the matter is he shouldn't have gone back there in the first place. And so at least he didn't desert them when they did have trouble. But ask the Lord to give you some good friends. And realize, as a Christian, people watch us. They watch to see our lives, to see if we're really living for Jesus, if we are who we say we are. When we talk about being believers and Christians, are we really? And so uh, it's important. And if you're going to be a good friend to somebody as a believer, first you need to be a believer. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you thought about it and thought, well, I don't know if I want to go to church. Church is fun, especially when the power of God's there. That's why we call ourselves power kids. I mean, God can do more in a split second. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to tell you this, because there's a lot of riots and things going on right now, and I'm going to take a moment. I did sidewalk Sunday school with thousands of kids. I did it for nine years up in Houston and Galveston. And I'm going to tell you, we went into some high crime and drug areas. I've been there when there's been shootings. I've been there and seen some things. I've been there when they tried to steal our stuff. I've been there when a man tried to grab me. And, you know, God, I learned some things. Number one, the name of Jesus is powerful. And when you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and someone comes at you to harm you, you can use that name. You can say, thank you, in Jesus' name, I'm protected. And, I, and you can bind those spirits. And I wouldn't get in their face and be real loud. It might make them matter, but you can say it. And I remember one time we were at a place called Irvington Village in Houston. And there was this guy, he was, he was trying to steal our stuff, and he was trying to give us a really hard time. And he was a big guy, and he looked, <laughs> he looked scary. And we just took authority, a couple of us that were working the site, and we, and we bound him, the spirits that were operating, not the person, but the demonic spirits that were operating through him. And, you know, he just stood there. It's like all of a sudden he couldn't move. He just stood there. We went about. We did our whole sidewalk Sunday school. Everything was fine, and nobody harmed us. I remember another time when I was in Galveston, this guy was drunk, and he grabbed me. And it was really funny because I used to dance a lot, and I, I grabbed his hand, and I twirled underneath it. And I went down the street. It was broad daylight. The guy's looking around. He could not see me. It's like God had made me invisible. 
So today, you know, with all the things going on out in the, and about in the world between the coronavirus and the looting, the violence, and the scary stuff that's going on with people, people threatening to kill people and all that, as a believer, you have authority. You are a power kid. You don't have to be afraid of things. I don't go stick your finger in their face and you know, challenge them. But you know this, that if somebody tries to come and harm you, you, the name of Jesus is powerful. You have authority. You can bind those things. God will keep you safe if you keep your focus and attention on him. And don't give place to fear. Realize greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And that's in 1 John 4, 4. That is a scripture. Well, in the meantime, you need to be in the family of God. So, I have a scripture here. It's in Romans 3, 23. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that's, that's true. Um, every one of us needs a Savior. And in fact, here we have, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And, you know, he did that. He, there's a real heaven to gain and a hell to shun. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, you need to. You say, well, I'll do it some other time. You don't know you have another time. There's been so many changes that have happened in the, this year alone that have I would never in all my lifetime think I would ever see, but are happening. And I'm telling you, you cannot wait. You need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So what do you do? In, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. So let's do that now if you want to accept Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Jesus, I do believe. I believe that God raised you from the dead. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus. I know I'm forgiven of all my sins, and I have a new beginning. Amen. Well, we're out of time, so we'll see you next week.